Okay. Listening carefully here, guys. Um, so we have we have this uh, object that's thrown up in the air. Okay, and we talked a little bit about what this would look like on a graph the other day. We had that curve that kind of flattened at the top and then accelerated back down, kind of looked kind of like a hairpin. Okay, uh, came back down. So this is that exact situation. Okay, we know it's going to be in the air for six and a half seconds. Okay, its final velocity is 2.4 meters per second down. So it changes direction. Okay, during its flight. Okay, and that obviously it's accelerating due to gravity at 9.81 meters per second squared. So we got to write down our givens here. Okay, VI is unknown. It's what we're being asked to solve for. VF is going to be negative 2.4 meters per second. I'm establishing that down is the negative direction, up is the positive direction. Okay, our acceleration also negative 9.81 meters per second squared. Okay. Um, and then we have the time as well. Okay, so time is 2.5 seconds. Or sorry, 6.5 seconds. All right. So looking for vi. So I have that a equals vf minus vi over t. Okay? And I'm trying to solve for vi. And this is probably the trickiest of the manipulations of this formula. So first thing I do is move t over to this side by multiplying. Then I'm going to I'm going to add sorry vi over to here so that it becomes positive. And then I'm going to subtract t times a back over to the other side, leaving me with the final velocity minus the change in velocity, t times a, should give me what I started with. All right? So when we plug in our numbers here, we, uh, we were told that vf was 2.4 meters per second down, so that's negative, minus okay, the time, 6.5, times the acceleration, negative 9.81 meters per uh, per second squared. Sorry, you not put the units in for there. Okay, so is this going to give me now a positive number? Yes, and should it? Yes, I initially threw this thing up. That's why including the signs is so important. I've got a negative number here, but now I'm going to subtract a negative number, okay, which is going to give me a more positive number, which is what I should end up with. All right, so negative 2.4, whoop, not 2.1, 2.4, okay, minus uh, 6.5 times negative 9.81. All right, so we threw this thing up at 61 meters per second. I think we only have two significant figures there, right? Okay, 9.81 has three, but remember we always go with our lowest or least accurate number. Okay, so we're looking at 61 meters per second up. All right, okay, and we talked about this yesterday, I think a little bit as well, in that the question gave me up and down. It didn't give me positive and negative. So my final answer should reflect what the question gave me. I don't want to write positive here. Okay? The question said up and down. I go with up and down. All right. Questions on how that one works? Okay. Like I said yesterday, that's about as involved as a question would get for you in terms of an acceleration problem. Okay. All right. Now, we're going to do some practice on... Okay, for this question, okay, it starts out and it says, the race car reaches the straightaway on the track going this fast. Okay, so if this is, this is the start of the question. So this number here is our initial velocity, and that's the thing that sometimes people get confused with with the wording. Okay, so it's going this fast, then it accelerates, okay, at 3.5 meters per second squared for 6.5 seconds. What's the car's initial velocity in meters per second? So we got to convert kilometers per hour to meters per second. Okay, everybody follow me there? Yes? Okay, so here's how we do that. Okay, we have to do what's called a compound conversion. It's not like converting kilometers to meters. Okay, you just multiply by a thousand. That's easy. I, don't, I not only have to convert the kilometers, I also have to convert the hours. That's why it's called a compound conversion. Okay, so I'm going to take my 140 kilometers over hours. And I'm going to start multiplying by the, the conversion factors that I need. Okay? I want to get rid of kilometers, and I want to make this meters. What do I have to multiply by? 1,000, right? Because there are 1,000 meters per kilometer. Okay? So if I've got a kilometers on the bottom and a kilometers on the top, kilometers cancels. Now I'm going to have meters. So I've converted my kilometers to meters. Now I have to convert my hours into seconds. 
Okay, so how many seconds in an hour? 60, everybody wants to say 60. It's our natural instinct, it's our knee-jerk reaction, except it's not. It's 3,600, okay? Because it's, that's just, and, and it happens every time I set you guys up for that, okay? All right, so there's 60 seconds in a minute times 60 minutes in an hour is 3,600, okay? So in one hour, there are 3,600 seconds. How did I know to put the hours on the top? Yeah, okay, this is going to make, I'm going to go less distance in a second, right? I should have the big number on the bottom, right? I'm going to be dividing by 3,600. Okay, so my hours are going to cancel. So what I'm left with now is I'm going to take my 140 and multiply it by 1,000 meters over 3,600 seconds. Can I simplify that? Yes, I can. Okay, if I divide both of these numbers by a thousand, I'm essentially left with this. One over 3.6. Agreed? Okay, still the same ratio. That's all that's really the, the concern here. Okay, so what's 140 times one? 140. Divided by 3.6. All I have to do is go 140 divided by 3.6, and I've converted kilometers an hour to meters per second. Okay? Write that on your formula sheet. Kilometers per hour to meters per second. Divide by 3.6. Okay? Meters per second to kilometers per hour. Multiply. I'm not going to write it on all your formula sheets. I don't have that kind of time. <laughs> I do want you to understand why that's why we do that. That's why I showed you the steps there toward getting to that step. Okay. okay, so for part A, we had to take our 140 and convert it to meters per second. So we just went 140, 140 divided by 3.6, okay, and we get 38.9 meters per second. And you know what? I think I have to change the answers on that because I don't think I have the significant figures done on that sheet. So I will have a look at those and make the appropriate changes. Okay. All right. So you guys can do the rest. Okay. Now that you've got that in meters per second, you can do part B. Okay. And you can start working on the others. We'll go through any ones that give you trouble. Okay. I have uh, updated on my website at least, the key okay, uh, for the worksheet you're working on to have the proper number of significant figures okay, for, every, uh, for every one of the questions. Now, a uh, question that usually comes up with number two, okay, um, says that this person drops a water bomb from his apartment window. Okay? So he's like reaching out the apartment window and dropping a water balloon on somebody. Okay? It hits the ground 4.25 4 seconds later. They give us the acceleration due to gravity. What do they not give us? Okay, actually they do. They just don't actually give you the number. If you hold something out the window and you're going to drop it, how fast is it going? Zero. Anytime something is dropped, released, okay, anything like that, its initial velocity is zero. It's starting from rest. If it's thrown, that's different. Okay? Then it would have an either an upwards or a downwards velocity to begin with. But he just drops it, which means it starts from rest in his hand. Okay? So once in a while you're going to come across that, just something to be ready for. Something to note, if you're doing the formula right, but you're not getting the right answer, it's because your calculator does order of operations. It's programmed to do that, right? So it does multiplication and division before it does addition and subtraction. So if you have um, some of the manipulations of this formula, like for example, you have uh, VF minus T times A, okay? Um, you should be able to punch that into your calculator and get the right answer, but if you have the original uh, manipulation of this formula like this, your calculator, when you punch this in, okay, you're going to write it like this. So let's just say VF was, uh, 
let's say VF was 15 and VI was 8, and then I go divided by time, which let's say was 2, your calculator goes 15 minus 8 divided by 2, not 15 minus 8 and then divide that by 2. It does order of operations, which is not going to give you the right answer. Okay? So when you're doing the original manipulation of this formula, you actually have to punch it in okay, so that it's 15 minus 8 divided by 2. Right? Gives you a much different answer. Everybody follow? Okay, so you do have to be mindful of that. That does happen fairly often. Okay, just know that your calculator is trying to be clever, okay? and uh, it doesn't always get it right. Or it does; it gets it right. You just didn't tell it the right thing. Okay, so I want to solve for t. Okay, I can't solve for anything when it's on the bottom. So I want to move it to the top by moving it over here. So right now I'm dividing by t. If I want to move something, I do the Opposite. So the opposite of divide is multiply. So I multiply both sides by t. t cancels over there. And t comes over here. I want t by itself, so I need to get rid of a. Right. Now I divide by a. Make sense? 